Hi, everyone. Deep neural net has become a powerful alternative for solving inverse problems. Today, for many image processing problems, specially trained deep neural networks have, have advanced state of the art often by compiling margins. In this work, we ask the following question. Can a single network be used to solve any arbitrary inverse problem? Many image processing problems can be formulated as solving a linear inverse problem, where we are given noisy linear measurements y and the linear operator a, and we try to reconstruct the image x. Different linear operator a formulates different image processing problem. For example, when a represents box averaging, we have an image super-resolution problem. For image inventing problems, a represents multiplying with a binary mask. For compressive sensing, A represents random projection. Despite the simple relationship between the image X and its linear measurements Y, linear inverse problems are usually extremely difficult to solve due to their underdetermined nature. Let's use image inventing as an example. Observe that I can fill any signals into the blank region and form a feasible solution, even if they are not valid natural images. To resolve the underdetermined nature of the problem, state-of-the-art algorithms use specially trained deep neural nets to learn the mapping from the linear measurements y to the image x. Even though specially trained networks can achieve state-of-the-art results, we need different networks to solve different problems. This is very inefficient, especially when we need to deal with a wide spectrum of image processing problems. In this paper, we propose a framework that can use one network to solve any linear inverse problem. We're motivated by projected gradient descent algorithm. Linear inverse problems of images can be solved by minimizing the norm of y minus ax subject to the constraint that x is a natural image. Projected gradient descent has two steps. The first step is a typical gradient descent on the objective function. The second step is very important. It projects our current estimate onto the constraint set. We repeat the two steps until convergence is complete, is achieved. A very important property of projected gradient descent is that the projection operator is independent to the specific problem we're solving. This means that the same projection operator is used to solve any linear inverse problem of images. Therefore, we propose to learn the projection operator with a deep neural net. And this allow, allows us to use the learn the projection network to solve any linear inverse problems of images. However, it is very difficult to learn the projection operator because we do not have all the natural images, so we cannot explicitly formulate the natural image set. This is also why most traditional methods use proxies like sparsity of wavelength coefficients or total variation. Thankfully, we show that we can approximate the projection operator using adversarial learning. In order to learn the projection operator, suppose we have a large image data set. We can perturb the images with random noise to create lots of non-image signals. Then we can train a classifier to approximate the set of natural images, after which we can train the projection network to project signals onto the set defined by the decision boundary of the classifier. During the training process, the projected sample points will gradually approach the true natural image set. Thereby, we use the projected sample points as the new negative examples to refine the classifier and its decision boundary. This is similar to adversarial learning. Now, let's look at some example results of the proposed method. On the top, we use a projection network trained on the ImageNet data set. And at the bottom, we use the projection network trained on the Microsoft Celebrity data set. First, we consider pixel-wise ink painting. On the top, we drop 80% of the pixel values independent to each channel. Now, for comparison, we show the bicubic interpolated result in the middle. As can be seen, the recovered image of the proposed method has less artifacts. 
on the bottom are the results on the Microsoft Celebrity Dataset. We can see that the proposed method outperforms typical way play sparsely prior and achieves comparable performance as the specially trained pixel-wise inventing network. Now we show results of clock inventing. This problem is harder because values of consecutive pixels are missing. The results shows that the proposed method outperforms by cubic inflation and the wave plays sparsely prior. Now we show the results of 2x super resolution. These are the results of compressive sensing with 10x compression. Since the linear measurements form a vector, we do not plot it in the slide. Note that the same network used in previous slides is capable of solving this problem. This demonstrates the ability of the proposed framework to deal with various input dimensions. In this slide, we use compressive sensing as an example to compare the robustness to, to the changes in the linear operator. Here, we train a compressive sensing network on a particular Gaussian random matrix. During testing, we gradually resample the matrix using the same Gaussian distribution. From the top row, you can see that even though the specially trained compressive sensing network achieves very good results on the original Gaussian matrix, its performance degrades rapidly once we start resampling. While well, this may be solved by training uh, different, networks, different networks for different measurement matrices, it inevitably increases the cost to deploying specially trained networks on a wide spectrum of problems. In comparison, in spite of using a single network, the proposed method is more robust to the changes in the linear operator. Finally, this table shows the peak signal to noise ratio values of the reconstructed images on three different problems on ImageNet dataset. We can see that despite using the same network across all these problems, the proposed method outperforms traditional wavelength sparsely prior and achieves comparable performance as the specially trained networks of each problem. To conclude, we train a deep projection network to fit a projection operator of the natural image set. By using the learned network as the projection operator, we can solve many linear inverse problems with one network. We have put our code and models on GitHub. Please take a look if, if in, you, you are interested. Thank you. I'm happy to take any question. Thank the speaker. Do we have questions in this room? Okay. Also in the other two rooms. Okay. Probably I'll start. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Mark. Okay. Here? Uh, where? Yeah, there's one. Oh. Okay. Hi. Go ahead, Michal. No, no. Go ahead, <laughs> Um, so you use the word prior, uh, and I think it's a it's a, a very interesting way to look at your network, as if it was comp uh, in the Bayesian formulation, as if it were um, learning a prior over clean images. And I'm wondering if you compare to other methods that learn a prior and then combine them with a likelihood at test time. Yeah, there are some uh, Bayesian Bayesian methods or probability methods. Uh, learn the prior or the distribution of images like um, uh, prob probabilistically. Uh, we haven't compared to them, but one advantage of our method is we learn the projection directly, so we don't need to solve. So if you do, if you learn the prior in a, um, probabilistically, you pr some uh, during the uh, reconstruction process you need to solve a gradient descent on your function. But here we, we have the projection operator um, directly, so we don't need to do the gradient descent on the network, which can be sometimes uh, time consuming. So I may have uh, missed something fundamental in the explanation. Do you actually train your network on these specific, uh, specific uh, uh, degradations? Uh, no, so we train the network on 
uh, adding ga random Gaussian noise and blur the images. So we then so we then do uh, drop out on the image on pixels. So and yeah. So you and train on dropped out, out pixels. What? So you do train on dropped out pixels. We didn't train drop out. We didn't oh, drop. You didn't. You trained wait. only on noise and a blur, but yeah. then you applied it to differently. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, it's probably a quick one, actually related to what Marco asked. Uh, you mentioned at some point that your projector is invariant, is independent of your linear uh, corruption operator. In that sense, why do you need to uh, restrict to linear operation? Yeah, actually, um, what we learn is a projection operator, and it is supposed to be able to uh, plug it into uh, any optimization problems as a projection step. So, but we haven't tried it on non-linear non problems yet, but it's a good future work. Thank yeah. you. Uh, okay, time reading. Thank you. Let's I, thank actually, you. I have a question. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, how does this relate to, regular, to the regularization by the noising technique of Elad and Milan Oh, uh, wait, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Can, can you explain again? So there's the regular regularization by denoising or red technique introduced by Ladd and Milan for last year, which is doing practically denoising as a prior, or the plug and play trick before that. Oh yeah, yeah. How, how does that connect? Did you compare with them? Uh, we didn't compare with them. So we're solving different problems, I believe. They are trying to generate images from different uh, categories. But here we try to solve, uh, learn a projection operator and solve inverse problems. Actually, they do the same thing. They're trying to deblur and paint, denoise, all of those things. Yeah. And it seems quite relevant, so maybe you could consider it. Thanks. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.